Hi everybody and welcome to the quarter racing update at Remington Park. I'm Dale Day back with you for another week of activity getting you set for the upcoming weekend of quarter racing action here at Remington Park. We'll also review what took place last week with our first big futurity of the season. Coming up this week the first grade one quarter horse race of the season and the $100,000 Leo Stakes. That one for the older runners at 400 yards featuring some of the top older runners in the country here at Remington Park in Oklahoma City on Saturday night. We'll also preview the Decatur Stakes, that one featuring the females and some solid runners in that one. That's on the Leo undercard this Saturday, March 30th. Now, when we mentioned a review, we'll go back to last week and take a look at the first main futurity of the season, the Grade 2 $325,000 Oklahoma futurity, a slight upset in that one, and we'll review that as well as all the other stakes races from last weekend, including a couple good ones for the paints as well as the Oklahoma Derby. Stopping by for a visit will be multiple AQHA champion jockey G.R. Carter. He is right there at the top of the rider standings again this season, battling for the wins lead. He already does lead in the earnings department, and we're just barely into the season, about one-fifth into the season at Remington Park, which will continue until June 2nd. And, of course, we'll have some other features as well. We'll take a look at the top Oklahoma bread runners of the week. We'll feature a training race runner from this week that you need to keep an eye out for when the real thing happens with this horse down the road in a few weeks. And we'll look back in the sport of the world's fastest athletes. We'll take a look into the past at one of history's fastest athletes as well. All that coming up on the show for you this afternoon. Right now, let's go ahead and take a look, as promised, at the Leo Stakes coming up on Saturday night, March 30th, here at Remington Park. It is the first of multiple Grade 1 events for the quarter horses this season at 400 yards. It's a $100,000 race, and here are just a few of the main contenders in the Leo. We'll start things off with Priceless Feature. Priceless feature, well-known, especially last year here at Remington Park, winning the Heritage Place Derby under then-young 70-year-old jockey Roy Brooks. Now, Roy is uh, just back to riding this season. He will not be on Priceless Feature on Saturday night, but Priceless Feature had a solid season at Remington Park last year, finished a very close second in the Rainbow Derby at Rudosa Downs in July, beaten only ahead by... Ochoa, one of the top runners in the country, who is expected here later on this year, but he will not be here for the Leo Stakes. A priceless feature, solid last year at Remington Park. Six of his eight career victories have taken place here in Oklahoma City, and he drew the outside post for the Leo Stakes on Saturday night. Now, others to take a look at include a couple who have already had an out over the strip this season, and you follow me and a toss-up. Both ran in the East Tech's handicap on opening weekend. The East Tech's a grade two event at a $50,000 purse serves as a prep for the Leo, and it's the first of many stakes races for the older horses. You follow me me and a toss-up both finished in that race you follow me coming through with an effort running in second and then a toss-up finished that race running fourth also in the East Tex coming back into the Leo on Saturday night will be uh, a month Bear with me for a second. It will be First Class Fred. That's who it is coming back from the East Ex into the Leo on Saturday night. Now, we mentioned you follow me in a toss-up. We also need to talk about the Long Knife. The Long Knife important as one who won the Texas Classic Derby last year at Lone Star Park in early November. That was the last win for the Long Knife. He's only had uh, one start since then in the championship at Sunland Park on uh, the day before New Year's Eve. And in that championship, runs, ran sixth behind Prospect to the top and some other solid runners included in that race. So here's a look at the Long Knife, trained by Sleepy Gilbreth, and will be ridden by jockey G.R. Carter. G.R. Carter gets them out on the Long Knife for the first time. This horse has been out, G.R., 11 times, and you have never been aboard. So what do you know about the Long Knife aside from what you've seen in other races where you've been on other competition? You know, Dale, I've watched him run probably almost every race he's had, and uh and I've actually been on him a couple times here uh, leading up to this race. I worked him both times. He's He's been out uh, for for official works over this racetrack and uh, and galloped him a couple times. And uh, he's he's training for a really up to a really big race. He he worked kind of just so-so the first time. I wasn't just really over the top impressed by him. But the second time uh, when we come back and worked him, he uh, he just worked like a monster. And I was, uh, I'm really excited to get the mount on him and uh, looking forward to it. Well, and trained by Sleepy Gilbreth, so yeah. right there that says about half the story. Yeah. And he has had a great run, great career, obviously, but really in the last few years has had a great run with the older horse set. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
he's got another one in in the race. But I mean, we're talking about horses like Cold Cash One Two Three, Ochoa. Uh, now the Long Knife mm -hmm. is in the barn, and not at the top peak level, but possibly one who could rise. Yeah, Sleepy. He's a uh, you know he's one of the he's one of the ultimate legend trainers in this game, and uh, I've uh, ridden for him sporadically. And I've never really been his main rider, but I'm I'm real tickled to, to get to ride for him. He's the he's just the epitome of a super nice guy, and uh, and I really do enjoy what time I do spend around him. Well, one win here, one win there. Suddenly, you start picking up more of those horses, and I'm oh, sure yeah. that, that would work out for you if it fits your overall agenda, which people don't realize outside of the racing circles. Gr, one of the busiest riders in all of the in all of horse racing. Period, especially in this sport of quarter horse racing, will include the paint snaps. You've got quite a system in the mornings. How you do this? How you work all winter long getting horses ready, but once they get to Remington Park, which is your first stop of the year. When you're working horses or galloping or whatever you're doing, you don't go all the way back to the barns. You kind of have a shuttle system. Oh, yeah. Explain how that works. Well, it, I, uh, I ride for a lot of different people, and uh, when I come off the track, I usually have, uh, I have you know, the, the trainer or the pony person, whatever, lead one back to the barn, lead, lead it back to the stable, and I usually have another one there close to the gap waiting on me. With A few of the stables, the barns are just right there, and a few other ones are pretty good ways away, and, you know, you spend that... So that's you could have take, taken another one in them 15 minutes, and I I like to get on a lot of horses. It does a lot of good things for you in the mornings. It keeps your weight down, gives you information you need to know about how how the horses are training, and uh, and it helps you make good decisions on which ones to ride. And so uh, I, this is the one one place that I really I really get on a lot of horses and go at it pretty hard. Now who coordinates that itinerary? Because that that has to be down to almost the second to make that work in a timely enough fashion to where it's worthwhile. It, it can get a little chaotic sometimes between me and my agent Donnie Stewart. We uh we work real real well together and a lot of the trainers and uh even some of the grooms or or pony people, you know, they kinda know when you tell someone like their second after the break, they know that, you know, the track opens back up at nine thirty. It takes about 15 minutes to take one. That they'll be up there, kind of looking for you when you come to come off the track about 9:45. Okay, let's talk about the championship again. You received your 10th American Court mm -hmm. Horse Association Jockey Championship mm -hmm. uh, for 2012, and uh, back going again. You had a big streak a few years ago of six in a row. Does it does it get old? Does it just become ah? Yeah, thanks. I'll take another trophy and a belt. I'm going to go on with it. You know, Dale, win winning never gets old, no matter what you're doing, man. Uh, you know. Uh, and I really make it a point to not take it for granted what what I what I do accomplish when I win you know awards like that because uh, you know you know what you know what it takes to actually accomplish things like that and all it's 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 there's a lot more to it than just going out and getting on horses in the morning you know going out to get on the horse to win the race uh, you know there's there's the trainers the owners the ho uh, mainly the horses that 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 actually do all the work to get me there I'm just the guy that gets to ride them to to get a lot of the glory, sometimes I feel like I get more than I actually deserve. But you know, you you still you have to get them there. You have to win the races, and uh, and I and the schedule that I've ha I've went at the last several years, Remington Park, Riadosa, try to hit all the year-end races in uh you know Dallas, Lone Star Park, Los Alamitos in California. It seems to have really worked good for me, and I've been doing it for a lot of years, and it seems like I give myself a lot more opportunities than other guys maybe, and uh. And it's I don't take it for granted when I do when I do get there. There's there's other guys like Cody Jensen or Ramon Sanchez that you know do a lot of the same things I do, and and they're all great riders. And to beat them is it, it's not it's easier said than done. Well, the top level of competition in quarter horse racing is in basically this area of the country. There's a few races here mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. in the Midwest or maybe towards the East, but basically it's it's Louisiana, it's Oklahoma, it's Texas, it's New Mexico, and it's California. Yep. And it, while it's year round. There's not that many places, so you have to kind of plan yeah. it out to make it work. Yeah, it's you know there, there's there's a few other places that a guy could could tweak tweak the schedule, but you know it's it's really it's really works well for me. Of course, I live in Oklahoma City. I'm a native Oklahoman. I really enjoy being here where where I can ride in Oklahoma. My wife works here in town, and uh, my my parents can come watch the races and all. And I, I really enjoy this time of year because because of the Oklahoma factor and we're I'm real grateful that we do have a place that runs for the kind of money we run for here at Remington Park and, and it, well and it makes it nice to be around home for about yeah. four to yeah. not quite six months but of, of the year and not have to always be traveling you know with 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 the schedule that I've that I've done the last few years I've really am only completely gone 
from home for about three or four months of the year. In the summer when I stay at Riodosa, and we have a home at Riodosa, and I primarily stay out there and come home a little bit. But uh, but then in the fall after Riodosa is over, I just go where I need to on the weekends to try to ride the races at Will Rogers, go to California, go to Lone Star, Zia Park. You know, I just and but but I'm still at home. You know, I'm just going on the weekends and uh. And I'm, I finally, I've made it to where I'm actually here, you know, about nine months out of the year. Well, and if you're going to live away from home for a couple months out of the year, living in the yeah. uh, oh, fives or one tens, we get here in the summertime. It, one last thing. We're early in the season. We're just 10, 11 days into it. You're second in the standings by seven. Jimmy Brooks has you 18 to 11. But you're leading in earnings. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting stat. I didn't bring all of yours. Your win place and show stats are more normal. Jimmy has 18 wins, he has one second, he has one third. Wow. You are kind of spread more evenly mm -hmm. throughout win, place, and show. Yeah. Now, I know earnings are very important because it's about winning, but it's about making money and oh, making yeah. a living, too. Oh, yeah. So your prognostication of the last 40 days, roughly, of the season, how do you think it's going to go? How, how the, the for rest you, of the season for, you, for me? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, I... I uh, I actually got, a lot of people don't know, but I actually had an accident the day before the meet started. I got run over by a loose horse. I, I come off the racetrack, got off of one, the system we was talking about, maybe to get on another, the wind was blowing. A loose horse come off the racetrack and plowed me over and, and, and I hurt my shoulder. And I've been, uh, I've been, uh, I've been riding a little, with a little bit of a sore shoulder and I, I, I can't say that it's, it's cost me any races but I'm sure it didn't help me win any and Jimmy and, and Eddie Willis have just had a phenomenal season they have a really a lot of good horses they're going to they're going to rock on and do well you know it's they're, they're a tough combo and they'll they'll be tough to beat they really will I heard about that accident it was fortunate yeah. you're sitting right here yeah. next to me and we're not doing this from the side of a hospital right place, so. it's I, it would have hurt me bad if I wouldn't have my helmet and vest on you know I still separate my shoulder a little bit I've been riding with sore shoulder it's it's trying to quit hurting a little bit but it's still tender just not that many years ago, the vest wasn't required, so it's yeah. pretty amazing how yeah. uh, the requirements worked out very well in many ways. All right, that's it for us. We're running out of time. I could, we could fill the whole half hour with GR. <laughs> GR could fill it by himself, but that's all right. He's second right now in the standings. He's first in the AQHA champion jockey standings, uh, winning again last year. Uh, that award for the tenth time. GR Carter with us now. We'll take a time out and come back with more in just a moment here on the Quarter Racing Update at Remington Park. Quarter Racing Update, Remington Park is brought to you by the Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association, Speed Horse Magazine, Juniors of Oklahoma City, by Racing Free, and by Oklahoma Equine Hospital. An official representative for horsemen in the state, the OQHRA administers race, benevolence, and scholarship programs, all to better the state of racing in the state of Oklahoma. Visit OQHRA.com. Speed Horse Magazine, the industry's most widely read and respected magazine. Complete coverage of quarter horse racing and industry events. Sponsor of the Speed Horse Race Series. Visit speedhorse.com. It's time for the Juniors of Oklahoma City Highlights Recap. A grade one event for Paints and Appaloosas, 350 yards, more than $62,000 in the purse. The far outside, Lasteo gets it into gear, moving well with Honky Tonk Pody. Honky Tonk Pody now puts the nose on the front, back to the rail, Judy's and Spanks right there. In between runners coming on, Super Glide Harley, outside Lasteo, Lasteo, Lasteo gets up by a bobbing head. Finishing strong to take the Speed Horse Graham Derby, Lasteo is trained by Eddie Lee Willis. Kenny Munts, the winning rider. Running second was Honky Tonk Pody. He's a sweet first down in the show spot. Laos Deo is owned by Joni B. Willis. The filly was bred in Oklahoma by Marion Hoskin. To the $136,000 Oklahoma Derby, a cold and wet night in Oklahoma City, but still all smiles from the Clint Crawford crew. His horse, number nine, High Class Vodka, was the public's third choice in the 350-yard race. Number eight, Big Boy, David Brown, the jockey. Big Boy was second in the wagering behind the entry headed by Milano Cartel. They're off the Oklahoma Derby. 
Breaking sharply from the middle, there goes 2010 Secret on the early lead. Chased by Lasper's Kiss, Big Boy now into gear, rolling along towards the inside, Lano Cartel. Lano Cartel right there, Big Boy flying outside now, Big Boy grabs the lead, away from Lano Cartel, Big Boy fights off Charvette, Big Boy on top by three parts of a length. Big Boy does it in the Derby over Last First Kiss and Charvette. David Brown aboard Big Boy for the win in that $136,000 event. Trained by Verrill Bonner, he stopped the timer at 17.320 seconds, earning an SI of 97. Big Boy was bred in Oklahoma by his owner, Irene Velasquez. The feature race of the weekend, the Grade 2 Oklahoma Futurity, $325,000 the purse in this 300-yard race, where the top qualifiers swing and debut the two horse had the most support. Dale Day with the call. They're off in the Oklahoma Futurity. Good start on the outside for Sassy Spit Girl. Grabs the early lead. JJ Hitman right there at the rail. Swinging to view, running along third. Trying to come on now. Fetching Beauty outside. In between runners, Royal Rhythm. JJ Hitman goes for the front. Here's Fetching Beauty outside. Fetching Beauty gets the upset in the Oklahoma Futurity. At 10 to 1 odds, Fetching Beauty takes the Oklahoma Futurity over JJ Hitman and Royal Rhythm. The California bread is owned by Alma Chavez of Chicago, Illinois. The filly is trained by Sacramento Chavez. A speed index of 93 for her time of 15.279 seconds over 300 yards. Victor Olivo was in the I in the 2013 Oklahoma Futurity. Juniors, Oklahoma City's ultimate dining experience since 1973. And there's a quick look back at the first huge weekend of stakes activity here at Remington Park featuring, among other races, that Oklahoma Futurity, the longest running Futurity in quarter horse racing. Now, many of those runners, since they're all two-year-olds, obviously were making their first starts in the trials and then those that were fortunate enough to qualify in the final. Almost every one of them, though, at least the ones that were stabled here at Remington Park, had a training race at Remington to try and prepare for the upcoming trials for the Oklahoma Futurity. The training race is very important, used mostly by trainers and owners with unstarted two-year-olds. And key runners for future races can be uh, gleaned from these training races for possible wagering purposes and just to know what's coming up next. This week, one of the last weeks of training races, we were nearing an end of the uh, schedule, an astounding training race runner took place in the last race just uh, yesterday on Wednesday the 27th. This is I Be Leaving You pulling away, just not even handwritten. The jockey was just holding on to the reins, and I Be Leaving You gets a good start, kind of stumbled a little bit actually, straightens out, gets away well after that, and then just pulls clear of the uh, field of four rivals behind. And I Be Leaving You did this all within himself. No problems at all, winning by about two and a half lengths and just drawing clear and doing that into a very strong 25 mile an hour headwind, our first really strong headwind training race day of the season. So keep an eye out for I Be Leaving You when that one makes his uh, debut in a real race here at Remington Park over the next month or so. We'll take another time out and come back with more in a moment here on the Quarter Racing Update. Speed Horse Magazine, the industry's most widely read and respected magazine complete coverage of quarter horse racing and industry events. Sponsor of the Speed Horse Race Series. Visit speedhorse.com. Somewhere there's music I'll paint the tune Somewhere there's heaven I'll hide the moon There is no moon above when love is far away Till it comes true That you love me As I love you Somewhere there's music I'm never in fall 38 race days this summer at Fair Meadows at Tulsa beginning June 8th and running through August 2nd. The crown jewels of the meet, the Grade 2 Speed Horse Futurity and Grade 3 Derby. Trials for the two will be run July 19th with the finals on August 2nd. Last year in the future, for a nice group of two-year-olds with Stormy Smith in the iron. Fair Meadows at Tulsa kicks off June 8th. 
Welcome back to the Quarter Racing Update. Of course, the world's fastest athletes featured here at Remington Park through June 2nd. And that moniker uh, is a fairly recent one applied here at Remington Park and on to the quarter horses here in Oklahoma in the last five years or so. But the name stands true going well back in time into history's fastest athletes as we take a look back at a runner from the 1980s whose potential star was on a fast rise but didn't quite reach the ceiling that many expected. A life cut far too short, but before it was over, many thought they had seen the fastest horse ever. Brigand Silk was born in 1983, a son of Beduino and Dusty Bee Lady by Alamitos Bar. He won seven races from seven starts for his owner, Wichita Land and Cattle Company, all under the tutelage of Jack Duby. Brigand Silk broke his maiden at Maynard Downs, and then he was off to Ruidoso with an eye on the prize. He won his trial for the Rainbow Futurity in track record time of 19.52 seconds. In the Rainbow Final, Brigand Silk squared off with six a run and six popper, among others, and put two links on the field while breaking his own record at 400 yards, 19.37 seconds, a record that would stand at Ruidoso for several years. Even before the trials, Brigand Silk was picked by many as the early favorite for the All-American. In his first trial for the race, under a stranglehold by Jackie Martin, the Colt powered through to a daylight victory. The very next week, Brigand Silk colicked and died. He was buried in the Rudoso Downs infield. Later, he was named champion two-year-old Colt and champion two-year-old by the AQHA. A career and life cut tragically short, but Brigand Silk will always be known as one of history's fastest athletes. History's Fastest Athletes is sponsored by and produced in conjunction with Speed Horse Magazine. Speed Horse Magazine, the industry's most widely read and respected magazine complete coverage of quarter horse racing and industry events. Sponsor of the Speed Horse Race Series. Visit speedhorse.com. More going on here. Continues. Phillies and mares get their shot on Saturday night on the undercard of the Leo Stakes in the Grade 3 $50,000 Decatur Stakes. Now that one is at 350 yards and very solid field comprised in the Remington Park Racing Office earlier this week. Let's take a look at a few to keep an eye for in that race, starting first with Corona My Go. Call for trainer Stacy Sherrod Hill, Corona My Go, five of 11 lifetime in the winner's circle. As a matter of fact, Corona My Go is basically a win or go home type of runner. On the board two other times in show, but for the most part is a winner that just likes to get it done and has earned over $81,000 to this point. Now others to look for in the Decatur include part of an entry, a powerful entry from owner Carl Peavy House and trainer Clint Crawford, Candy Cartel. She'll be the 1A on Saturday evening. Tony Bennett has been named to write both parts of the entry. We'll find out which one he selects uh, come race time on Saturday evening. Now Candy Cartel. Nine wins from 19 career starts. She's won three times at Remington Park, seven of nine lifetime in the money here, and will be making her first start of 2013. Candy Cartel's last action at Remington Park was a year ago in the Remington Park Championship, where she finished a disappointing seventh behind Cold Cash 1, 2, 3, and many other top stars in the sport. One more to look for, Cruz in the Wagon, who had a stellar 2012 as a three-year-old at Remington Park, mostly in derby competition. The Oklahoma Red Cruz in the Wagon also set a track record here at Remington Park in the Jack Brooks Stakes against Oklahoma Reds over a sloppy surface on Memorial Day weekend at 350 yards, the clocking of 17.06 seconds, a new 350-yard track record at Remington Park. Cruz in the Wagon is trained by Brent Clay, owned by Terry and Mary Purcell out of Leavenworth, Kansas, and will be ridden by Stormy Smith, Clay's son-in-law. So just a few to keep an eye for in the Nikita Stakes on Saturday evening on the good undercard of the Leo Stakes March 30th. More coming up on the Quarter Racing Update in just a moment. Quarter Racing Update Remington Park is brought to you by the Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association. 
Speed Horse Magazine, Juniors of Oklahoma City, by Racing Free, and by Oklahoma Equine Hospital. An official representative for horsemen in the state, the OQHRA administers race, benevolence, and scholarship programs, all to better the state of racing in the state of Oklahoma. Visit OQHRA.com. Speed Horse Magazine, the industry's most widely read and respected magazine. Complete coverage of quarter horse racing and industry events. Sponsor of the Speed Horse Race Series. Visit SpeedHorse.com. Racing Free is dedicated to acknowledging and rewarding the great people in racing who are racing free. In an effort to eliminate the use of performance enhancing drugs, Racing Free offers incentives for all industry participants. Visit RacingFree.com. The Quarter Racing Update's Oklahoma Bread of the Week. The Oklahoma Derby was the scene for this outstanding state bread's latest victory. Big Boy prevailed by three quarters of a length in the $136,000 event at 350 yards. Bred and owned by Irene Velasquez, Big Boy is a son of Oak Tree Special and Bossa Nova Baby by Corona Cartel. Burl Bonner, the trainer, David Brown, the jockey on Big Boy, our Oklahoma Bread of the Week. And that is going to be a quick wrap for what's happening this week on the Quarter Racing Update at Remington Park. Don't forget, we'll be with you again on Thursday, April 4th, as we bring in a new month and get set for a slew of trials on Friday, April 5th, and Saturday, April 6th, qualifying runners for that lucrative Remington Park Futurity featuring Oklahoma Bread. So that's next week on the Quarter Racing Update, featured here on RaceView Network and OQHRA.com at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. For all involved, I'm Dale Day. Join us again next week, and good luck and good winning this week at Remington Park.